Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, interview. Uh, today I have a special guest with me today. His uh, name is uh, Elias Bakken. He is an electronics wizard and has made a lot of cool stuff like 3D printers, HDMI screens, robots, see-through wall sensors, coffee machines, recycling machines, you, and you name it. He is not only capable of doing electronics, he's also a really master's, master of the mechanical stuff, and I'm really jealous, about, jealous of him about that. Elias is also a good friend of mine, and, he, and we co-founded a company back in the days. And today I'm psyched to have him on as a guest on this show that might turn into something regular. We'll see how it goes. So, Elias, welcome. Thank you, Evan. It's nice to be here. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, let's start with uh, who are you and what are you working on? Well, you gave a great introduction. Thank you for that. Um, right now, I'm working on... I'm spending most of my time uh, on my uh, main project, which is uh, the Replicape. And uh, that is a 3D printer electronics uh, board for a Big Bone Black. And um, so if you know about 3D printing, then uh, uh, you probably know that it is controlled by an electronics board. And uh, usually this is done with an Arduino, but uh, I've chosen to go with the Beagabone Black instead because of the extra power and all the capabilities that that can provide. Uh, so that is, that is my main project right now. And I've also got some... Uh, other uses for it besides 3D printing. I'll try to give you a small tour of that if that's okay. Yeah, okay, come on. Yeah, cool. So this is this is a 3D printer that I'm using uh, uh, the board uh, for. Um, yeah, pretty standard 3D printer. And uh, I'm also using it for... Um, this, is a, this is a test jig that... Uh, that I'm uh, developing that can has a magnetic uh, sensor so that uh, it can be used to probe at uh, different locations. So this is for set bed leveling um, if you're familiar with that. And uh, I'm also using it for um, a uh, this is a coffee this is the coffee machine that you were talking about. Um, and so that's a different use for it. So Replicate is my main project right now. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we uh, we have um, a lot of beginners with us today, and yep. um, a lot of people um, uh, are interested in how you can get started with electronics. So, can you tell us uh, the story about how you got into electronics? Um, the story of how I got into electronics. Well, I think uh, it started uh, back in when I was uh, in what is that? Undomskola. <laughs> yeah, like what yeah. is that in English? Elementary school, high elementary school, or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, I started becoming interested in it, and I read a lot about different circuits. Um, I think one of the one of the big things for me was I made a home security system for my room. Um, uh, and uh, it, you know, it was basically uh, uh, just an alarm that went off uh, when you went into the room. But uh, I was using a switch for it. So, uh, and I, <laughs> I, I discovered that okay. So if if a burglar comes into the room and he sees that, or he he hears the alarm, and then he can see that there's a switch down there. <laughs> so he'll just toggle it back into the off position and then the alarm goes off. Um, and so I thought, okay, maybe I need to need some way to uh, get the alarm to remain on after the uh, after the door has been open or I mean you, so that you sort of disable the switch after the door is open. Uh, and so I, I used a, um, a uh, relay for that um, and uh, Made a uh, like a system that kept the like disabled the the switch after the alarm had been switched off, and so there there was a different switch for for turning it off again. 
that only I knew about. <laughs> so I think that was one of the first projects, and I was like, oh my god, I've I've discovered that a that a that a coil can be used in this way, and I'm like, oh, nobody could have discovered this before, and <laughs> so I was like, super proud. <laughs> but then uh, later, when I went uh, into school and uh, started learning about electronics, I discovered that this was a very normal way to do stuff. So uh, it wasn't that big a deal, but it was big for me. So yeah. Yes. So you basically just found a switch at home, and then you built this. Um. Well, I, it was a normal switch, you know, that you could find every, every anywhere. Basically, I guess. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you be, you built a lot of cool stuff, but what is the coolest thing you ever built? What is the coolest thing that I've ever built? Um, uh, wow, that's a difficult question. I should have uh, <laughs> I should have went through your questions <laughs> before. <laughs> um, I think the 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 coffee machine comes close uh, or comes high up on the list. It's um, it's a it's called Debrew, I, and I showed you this before. And it's it's uh, basically it's a three D printed coffee machine, um, and it I think it's it's actually quite useless, but it's also pretty. It, it's it scores high in coolness factor, I would say. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's the coolest thing. Is it, are you able to turn it off and show us? Uh, it doesn't turn off, no. It okay. only turns on. <laughs> <laughs> or do you mean on? Yeah, just to see it, it move off. and... Uh... Oh, does that work? Uh, it's been a while since I looked at it. Um, I, I'm afraid to turn it on right now. I'm afraid... So uh, okay, okay, yeah, maybe it another takes the preparations. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. So imagine this: someone, That's... a guy or a girl, comes up to you and say, "Hey, Elias, you built such cool things. I want to be able to do that. Uh, uh, how do I? Get, how do I do that? Uh, what? What advice would you give this person?" Well, it doesn't take that much to get started with electronics, I think. Um, there's a lot of uh, information online. Your blog is a great source of uh, inspiration and information as well. And uh, I sometimes use it, actually, <laughs> for, uh, for reference. Um, but uh, to get started, how do you get started? Uh, I think a good idea is to uh, find some something that you want to make, like a project or some sort of problem that you want to solve. And then uh, uh, Google for information on how to solve it and then uh, uh, make the board for it or make the electronics for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find a project that you like and figure out how to build it by Googling. Yeah, that's that's the way I learn things. At least uh, having some sort of project, and then just knowing that it's possible. Uh, as long as I Google enough, I'm gonna find the solution for it. I think that's a good way to start. So yeah. start with something. Yeah, start with something that you really want, not something that you know you can do. Like blinking an LED is probably something that most people will be able to do, but start with something a little bit more. Uh, difficult. That's my advice, at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, burglar alarm. Yeah, like a burglar alarm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but home automation is actually uh, good. Uh, good for uh, several projects. Yeah. Did you understand that? <laughs> yeah, that that yeah. information you learned in that project was useful for other stuff as well. Yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. So. What electronics project are you most psyched about today? Well, I'm still uh, I'm still very psyched about uh, the the replicate and and uh, 3D printer electronics. I've been I've been working on that for two years, uh, but I'm still super psyched about it. And uh, it's it's come to an to a stage where I'm not doing so much um, electronics development, but instead. 
uh, developing a, a, a web interface for controlling the different parts of it. So uh, a few years back, it was a lot of electronics, uh, but then you sort of uh, build upon that with uh, user or like you 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 simplify the the interface for it. And so uh, I, I'm uh, at a stage now where I'm. Uh, where I'm actually making a user interface for controlling the different parts of the printer, and uh, so yeah, that's so you're, uh, you're basically building software on top of the hardware that you built earlier. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can call it that. Yeah. That's cool. So that's that's uh, that's one thing I really enjoy, like going down to the uh, to the small pieces and uh, like the the transistors and uh, the the stepper motors and everything. And then uh, being able to control that from a high level perspective, I think that's uh, that's something that gives me a lot of joy. I like that. Cool. Um, so I'm still very psyched about that project. It's uh, there's still tons of stuff that I want to do, and there will be a lot more electronics development for that as well in the future. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Can you give a? I saw you had the 3D printer on your uh, desk. Could you like give us a shot about of it again and just uh, like? Yeah, sure. Uh, the grand tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so here it is. Uh, hopefully, you, you will be able to see it. Um. So. Uh, everything about this printer has been made in-house. Um, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit special because it has a... Um, so when you say in-house, you mean you built it? Yeah, yeah, I built it. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so the, <laughs> the mechanical parts have been uh, milled in-house. And um, uh, the like the exterior has been uh, designed in house and then uh, laser cut on uh, a machine. And uh, some parts are three D printed. These are just prototypes. And then uh, this this display this will eventually be a very nice user interface. Can you zoom um, in on that? Can you can you can you see that? There's a display here. Yeah, I've got, there. I've got other uh, versions of it as well. That this is this is one of the one of the other projects that I'm really uh, excited about. This is a uh, manga screen, so this is an important part of the 3D printer. And like you said in the introduction, it's a uh, it's it's sort of a cell phone display, and uh, it has an HDMI input, so it's. This was actually featured on Hackaday, and they were. I remember they were saying that we're so. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe we haven't seen this before, but basically it's an HDMI uh, input, and then an LCD. So uh, and also so it's with capacity. Yeah. That can be used for Raspberry Pi, for example. Yeah, it can be used for Raspberry Pi, or it can be used uh, with uh, Beagleborn Black, or it can actually be used. And this is this is a cool thing that I have that not a lot of people have. It can be used with an Arduino tray. Ah, cool. So this is like the yeah, this is like the next next uh, thing with uh, Arduinos. So if you're into that, then Arduino tray is like the, ah, it's gonna be great. <laughs> mm -hmm. It works with that as well. All right, but uh, yep. that was uh, very cool to uh, hear about uh, your projects and uh, your story. And uh, uh, is there any parting advice you would like to give to the listeners or viewers before um, we end off this interview for today? Uh, no advice, no. <laughs> no, but uh, stay safe and uh, continue, I mean, hack on, <laughs> I guess. 
Awesome. Yeah. All right. Then uh, thank you very much, Elias. And um, have a good day. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for the interview. Have a good day, you too. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.